Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, that's what welcome to the channel. We talk about anything. So today I have a video for you guys. This video is about corruption in America. Corruption is legal in America. And this is going to blow your mind because a lot of Ghanaians that live in America have been feeding us that there's no corruption in America. That is why the system is working. And this video is going to show you that these people are lying. Okay? They are lying to you guys. And before I show you guys this video in the first place, I want to thank everybody that's going to put this video, like this video, comment on this video, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe to this channel. So yes, let's start the video, people. Let's start the video because this video is very interesting. Okay, let's start. Last few years, I've had this sense that everything I learned as a kid about how America's government works is completely wrong. But I had no idea how bad things actually were until I saw this one graph. Researchers at Princeton University looked at more than 20 years worth of data to answer a pretty simple question. Does the government represent the people? Now, this is what they found. This axis here represents public support for any given idea. On the left, at 0%, are ideas that not a single American wants. On the right, at 100%, are ideas that everyone supports. This axis represents the likelihood of Congress passing a law that reflects any of these ideas, from a 0 to a 100% chance. On this graph, an ideal republic would look like this. If 50% of the public supports an idea, there's a 50% chance of it becoming law. If 80% of us support something, there's an 80% chance. You get the idea. Yeah. Now, most Americans would probably agree that, with a few exceptions, we should be as close to this ideal as possible. Unfortunately, the way America actually works doesn't even come close. Take an idea that nobody supports, literally nobody, and it has about a 30% chance of becoming federal law. Now, take an incredibly popular idea, the most popular idea this country has ever seen, and there's also about a 30% chance of it becoming law. This means that the number of American voters for or against any idea has no impact on the likelihood that Congress will make it law. Put another way, and I'm just going to quote the Princeton study directly here, the preferences of the average American appear to have only a minuscule, near zero, statistically non-significant impact upon public policy. So if you've ever felt like your opinion doesn't matter and that the government doesn't really care what you think, well, you're right. But there's a catch. This flat line only accounts for the bottom 90% of income earners in America. Economic elites, business interests, people who can afford lobbyists, they get their own line. Look at how much closer their line is to the ideal. When they want something, the government is much more likely to do it. And when they don't, they have the power to completely block it from happening, no matter how much the rest of the country supports it. They get what they want, and guess who ends up paying for it? We pay for it with the most expensive healthcare in the world. We pay for it with a tax code that's a complete mess. We pay for it with internet that's slower and more expensive, with wasteful spending, a floundering education system, a catastrophic drug war, and one in five American children born into poverty. Almost every major issue we face as a nation can be traced back to this graph. How does this happen? Well, just follow the money. Right now, it's perfectly legal to buy political influence in America. Here's how it works. Let's say a big bank wants a law that would force taxpayers to bail them out again if they repeat the exact same reckless behavior that crashed the global economy in 2008. Not exactly the most popular idea with the public, and Congress knows that. That should be the end of it. But that's where the money comes in. It's perfectly legal for our bank to hire a team of lobbyists, whose entire job is to make sure that the government gives the bank what it wants. Then, those lobbyists can track down members of Congress who regulate banks and help raise a ton of money for their re-election campaigns. It's perfectly legal for those lobbyists to offer those same politicians million-dollar jobs at their lobbying firm. Then, those lobbyists can literally write the language of this new bailout law themselves and hand it off to the politician they just buttered up with campaign money and lucrative job offers. And it's perfectly legal for those politicians to take the lobbyist written language and sneak it through Congress at the last second. So now you've got a law that greatly benefits the banks and the whole process can start over. This is how a bill becomes a law. 
A special interest hires some lobbyists. Those lobbyists collect campaign contributions, offer jobs, and then write the laws that Congress then passes to help those same special interests. This happens every day on every single issue with politicians of both parties. In the last five years alone, the 200 most politically active companies in the United States spent $5.8 billion influencing your government. Those same companies got $4.4 trillion in taxpayer support. And that's trillion, with a T. And that's just the top 200 companies. Never mind every other special interest, every union, every trade association, and every billionaire. Every single one of them can use their money to buy political influence. You know, there's this idea out there that this only became a problem after the Supreme Court Citizens United decision in 2010. But the data goes back almost 40 years, and the results are clear. Corruption is legal in America. And as long as it is, anyone who can spend money to buy political influence will. The solution here isn't rocket science. Make corruption illegal. We already know Congress won't do it. I mean, one look at this chart will tell you that. What we need is a plan that lets us go around Congress and do what the American people do best. Fix this mess ourselves. Well, good news. We have that plan and it's already working. Now that we've got the problem covered, let us show you how to be part of the solution. So we have watched the video and you have seen that a corruption is going on all over the world. So the next time somebody tells you that corruption is only in Africa, you tell the person, my friend, Corruption is everywhere. America, Europe, everywhere you go. Corruption going. Only thing that difference is that these people are professional thieves and professional corruption. In Africa, we are, um, how do you call it? We are amateurs. We don't know how to steal and that kind of stuff. I think right now in Ghana, I think that kind of uh, corruption is also going. You have companies who are um, yeah, uh, giving money to politicians to do some business in other places. That's the same thing. It's the same thing that's going on in America. And uh, when uh, companies give or family members give uh, uh, money, even in Europe, it's going on. Some Sometimes they even give you um, a favor. Here they call them a favor. It's like when you need something, you give somebody wine. You give that person wine, and when you need something, the person will help you too. That's the same point. You don't find out that they're taking money. You don't see that. But still, the corruption is going on. You can see a lot of buildings that's coming up. And you say, hey, how can this building can be there? Yeah, corruption. Because corruption is everywhere. You know somebody, and a person will help you to do something. That is what is going on in Europe. What is going on in America. What is going on in Dubai, all that's going on in Japan, is going on in China. Everywhere you go is, it's about who you know. Okay, so don't think that Ghana is the only place where corruption is going on. We have to think about it. Now, um, you know the two-party system in Ghana. Yes, the two-party system sucks, but if you think about it, the two-party system is the best. You know. There are only two parties and you have to support the one you think that you will benefit the most. That's all you have to do in America. It's the same thing. But what is the problem is that a lot of poor people who vote for the party that they will not, yeah, they will get nothing from it. In America, it's the same thing. It's the Republicans. In Ghana, it's the NDC. People will just vote against their own interests. That's simple. That's how society works. People will vote against their own interests if you give them somebody to hate. That's all. Now, this is one that I think is very interesting. So, the development in Ghana is stopping because of one thing. Many things. Ah, it's a lot of things that stop in Ghana from development. But there's another one that I think that is very important. And I think the fix the country have to do something about this too because this is amazing. See, the system in America is broken, but still it's working. Okay. And the reason is simple. So in America, you have two party system. You have the Democrats and you have the Republicans. 
Okay. Now, the Republicans are right. They're against everything. Okay. They're against abortion. They're against uh, uh, even uh, the pill birth control. They're against it. And 34 states in America. Now, listen carefully. They're against abortion. So, 34 of 30, uh, maybe is uh, right now is uh, lower, but supports given rights to the rapist. Uh, there was, um, uh, if I find it, I will show you guys. They gave this lady who was raped when it was she was 16, um, how to pay child support to, to her rapist because she bought a mobile phone for her daughter. Yes. People, if you vote against your own interests, that is what you get. Because you hate somebody, that is what you get. So a lot of people in America have been hurting because of the Republicans. Now, in Ghana, so you have, in America, you have uh, the Republicans, they are right, and the Democrats are left. They support the blacks, they support the Muslims, they support the gays, they support abortion, they support they support almost everything that you yourself right now doesn't want to have. That is what the Democrats, they support everything. Only brief consent. Okay, so they support the Muslims, but they don't support what they are doing. The um, Sharia law and killing, they don't support that. They don't. They just support the Muslim. That sub Muslim are just normal people, and we should not discriminate against them. So, this is the good part. But when you come to Ghana, you have the NDC, MPP, MPP, and NDC are the same level. Okay, the the mindset of them is everything is uh, the same. The only difference is that. Uh, MPP want to develop Ghana. That's the only thing. Okay? They're against abortion. They're against uh, um, uh, the gays. They're against a, a lot of things. Okay? They are religious people. They are, um, yeah, I would call it radical Muslims. <laughs> radical Christians. They are radical Christians. So that is the problem that we have. If the MPP can go left, be more uh, socialist, and support the right of the people man i think ghana can become great and i think the fixed country should go with the mpp because mpp want to develop ghana they can go with them and what they only have to do is simple people and this is what the fixed countries don't understand if you look at america right now we have the progressive that is like the fixed country Right now, they are in the, the uh, Democrats. And right now, they are in Congress. They are, yeah, they are shouting out. But if the, and, uh, you know, the problem with uh, uh, Fix the Country is they don't understand the game, man. They have to join the MPP. They can be elected to one of these uh, cities, uh, towns or whatever. They become MP and they start developing their town. In the meantime, people will see what is going on in that city and they will adopt too. So that is how they change the, the system. How to fix Ghana is how we fix the country, people. So I hope that you guys love this video and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.